episode 234 of the FEH Lounge is brought to you by the Pullins Group, delivering public affairs, consulting, and marketing services for small businesses trying to grow. Follow them on the web at PullinsGroup.com. The FEH Lounge. You want to schedule your life around it. A long time ago, on a gloomy, wet Cleveland spring night, two men stand alone amidst the late night drizzle. Their voices echo across the vacant station parking lot as they debate the merits of the great American radio show that have been missing for far too long. On that night, an idea was born. That idea became the FDH Lounge. Welcome to the FDH Lounge. Back on uh, January 14th, 2007, my rudimentary grasp of history tells me, yes, uh, January 14th, 2007. So, uh, and here we are today, uh, breaking it all down. We have since invented the Pantheon with all these different categories here, voting on the best of the best of all time. The FEH Academy of Arts and Sciences casting their ballots uh, in all of these categories, uh, including all of us gentlemen here today. Best NFL defensive player. We, we did best uh, football player previously. But uh, taking another look inside of it here, a little deeper inside, the defensive side of the ball. And uh, we have a lot of votes that are really uh, kind of spread out, particularly relative to our first category we looked at, multi-sport athlete. Many of these have got only one vote apiece, uh, starting with me. And, and again, and I, I always get accused of being maybe a little bit of a, a history snob or what have you going back in this. I voted for Deacon Jones, uh, the man who really kind of originated the, the concept of the sack in pro football. Interestingly enough, I'm, I'm always fascinated at when votes come in. The very next vote that came in after I cast mine, Lloyd Carroll, good friend from the Queens Chronicle, voting for Merlin Olson. So we got two guys right off the bat from the same Rams line right there, and very few thereafter that would be as old school as those first two. One vote for Ray Lewis. One vote for, this is very interesting, because some people kind of selectively would go just towards today. They would vote all time in some categories and today in others. One vote for Ty Warren which uh, there are some that are even more contemporary than that when you hear the next two. One vote for J.J. Watt. One vote for Von Miller. One vote for Ed Reed. One vote for Jack Tatum. One vote for Bruce Smith. Uh, that was yours, Anthony. And speaking of votes of today and votes that might have had a little, I, I hope had a little bit of tongue-in-cheek, Matt Patron with Phil Taylor. So, yep. So At I, least they didn't say Brandon Whedon. Uh, at least you did. He is a defensive player, isn't he? He's always <laughs> giving the ball away. Well, yeah, he, he is the other he, yeah. he is the M defensive MVP for the other team. Uh, he most certainly is. Uh, and the the other vote that we had, uh, and this is a fairly old school one. Uh, good friend Paul Pasek voting for Ronnie Lott. So this then takes us to our multiple votes uh, in the categories here. There are only two guys that got multiple votes. One guy made a a, a run. In the end here, it being in the, uh, the Pantheon within the Pantheon, almost got 50% plus of the votes, but only two guys showed up on multiple ballots. One vote for Dick, or I'm sorry, three votes for Dick Butkus. He was one of the guys that got more than one. And ten votes for the winner in this thing, and he got um, five of the last six casts, so he was really on a run at the end there. Lawrence Taylor, LT, takes this thing going away. And is that the guy that you guys would have thought going in probably would have been the favorite for this? That's that he was the first guy that came to my mind. And okay. I, and I ran through and thought about Mike Singletary and Dick Buckus and Deacon Jones as well. Okay. And I sort of rolled through it in my head a lot of the different players from different eras. Just like you, I like to think about going you know, go back and look at some of the older players as well. And um, in the end, I think my North Carolina uh, uh, biases and roots came out. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Yeah, you did. That was uh, you voted for uh, a winner in the, in this uh, category. We're going to tally up here at the end and see uh, who voted for the uh, the most winners. It's it's generally not me because I, I like to go off the beaten path on some of these ones here. There are some people that like to. Good 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 friend Raymond Smalley likes to vote for the most winners if he can. Hey, I was just surprised I got one. <laughs> well, it was yours, so that was <laughs> that was kind of inevitable. I think in the history of this thing, Rick, I had probably voted. I had probably been uh, with the winner very few times. <laughs> Yeah, you, 
Those were you go too. eclectic. You do, but I appreciate that. There's there's always a lot of ones that make it kind of interesting on your ballots here. But uh, Lawrence Taylor takes this one running away uh, as we as we go through the first couple categories of the Pantheon here. Uh, some of the most decisive uh, votes, and it's very interesting, yeah, as, as I look ahead, as I look at the non-sports ones, some very congested ones, later on in sports it is kind of congested on the balloting, but the first several ones uh, are not. So it, it, LT, and it's really kind of anticlimactic. There. And really, and all of us who voted for LT, was that really just a vote for cocaine for best defensive <laughs> player in <laughs> NFL history? I mean, it yeah. <laughs> probably might have been. Yeah. A good commercial player for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> LT, what was his what was his line at that trial with the underage uh, prostitute? Something like I wasn't trying to card her or something like that when they asked about the age. I mean, that was good old LT. Yeah, with his uh, illicit sex with his drugs, whatever. But uh, hey, he kept it in check well enough during his uh, playing career uh, to get it done. And again, we go back to uh, he was a contemporary basically and played a lot of the same years. As Bo Jackson, we talked about it in a previous category here. You do get that with the lounge. And, and, and sometimes when I bust people's chops about, you know, stuff of today or whatever versus lo looking back in time, I get that. And our senior editor, Jason Jones, has even said to me, look, you know, it, it, I tend to go by things I've seen in my lifetime. And I understand that's how a lot of people approach this. And LT's who I would have guessed, and I would have guessed it would have been pretty Well, I mean, I think solid. the great example, Rick, is, you know, Merlin Olsen was a great player. Right, but most people didn't see 30, 40, 50 of his games, mm -hmm. and so they they know the name, they know he was a great player, but they didn't witness it, mm -hmm. you know, or even you know, have the chance to get the full DVD set of every game ever played by Merlin Olsen to sit down and watch. But sure. So they have a, you know, again, it's, it's human fantasy. You vote with what you know. Let me ask this, see if anybody knows this. I was just talking about this off air with somebody today about uh, Merlin Olsen and the fact that he got a vote here. The thing that's the most impressive, the thing that he did that probably nobody else is ever going to replicate. Do you, do you know the streak that he had that's probably not going to be duplicated? Uh, <laughs> acting on a great show like that, yeah. I was like, that's a good point. I actually hadn't thought about that. I, I made the mistake of just looking at his football career here. Oh, from, oh. from 19, and, and, and this is one of the things, too. The last time I was at the Hall of Fame down in Canton with a couple friends of mine, that was the one thing that just, I knew it going in, but a couple of my friends saw it, and it just blew them away looking at his, his, his uh, plaque or bust or whatever they call it. 1972 to 1976, the man made the Pro Bowl. He had an uninterrupted streak of being in the Pro Bowl. That is a re the record that will never be duplicated. Nobody's ever going to do that ever again. Four years from 72 to 76? Or, uh, 62, I should oh, say. Well, 62. Oh, oh, yeah, you guys four weren't, years, you guys weren't, se you guys weren't, se like, you guys weren't like, selling it. And I was like, like, no, 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 1962. I, I'm, I'm going to guess I that was, revises your opinion a little. I was almost ready right. to look at you like you were completely really? stupid. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's Nine, very impressive. 1962 <laughs> to 1976. What is it, 15 years, whatever. Okay, yeah. That's a little more impressive okay, thank than four you. years. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, because what, Joe Thomas on five? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think, yeah. How many's Tom Brady on? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 1962. <laughs> well, I think that actually speaks more than anything. That speaks to his um, staying healthy. Yeah, that's true. Play. I mean, you know, Tom Brady lost a season. Right. You know, due to injury. I mean, so the fact that he played such a, a difficult and punishing position. Right. And, and stayed healthy and, and made the Pro Bowl, that's a real testament. Well, not only that, too. I mean, I, part of it's a function of eras. It's a thing today where with the amount of money that's made, that maybe is a thing you get later in the career. Do I really want to punish myself for one more year of this? Versus in Merlin Olsen's day, you know, you're playing to stay alive financially, yeah, more well, or less. The, the, game was, the game was more important back then. It was. It was more to play in that game. Now, if you get these guys like a Ray Lewis or an Ed Reed or... Let's, I don't want to play in that this year. I think I'll stay yeah. home. Well, when you only made $100,000, a trip to Hawaii was... The whole family was like, oh, that's pretty good. That's right. true. By, by the way, uh, Ray Lewis getting a vote uh, in, in the, uh, the Pantheon here, again, as we mentioned, for best NFL defensive player. I understand last weekend after the game, uh, last home game in Baltimore, he was asked about the prospect of a bust in Canton. He said, you know, I really can't comment on a pending court case. I really shouldn't get into that. Oh, <laughs> so. You know why I wouldn't vote for Ray Lewis? And not that he's not a great player, uh -huh. because he's been a great player. Yeah. Um, but you break down the statistics – you put his statistics and London Fletcher's in front of somebody, they're almost identical. That's true. That's and true. And London Fletcher gets nothing in terms of credit, you know. I can't believe how strong he's still going. 
It's amazing. This is one of his best years. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. I, mean, I think he's a guy that really ought to get consideration for Canton as well. For yeah. The, and he, he probably he's going won't. To. I, I think mean, he will. He may consider, but I, I, would, I will be surprised if he makes it because he's one of these sort of under-the-radar guys. Yeah, but you know what? Less things are under the radar these days, though. With, with, with sites like Football Outsiders and the statistical analysis that goes on with the Internet, I think we tend to take a closer look at these things. He, I think he's lucky to be playing in this era. If he was playing like in the 60s, I agree with you. That that crap would have been buried and it would have been, oh, London Fletcher, I heard he was pretty good. But, you know, I, I, I'm an optimist on that. I really think that, you know, people are going to see that and particularly the writers. That's my guess. Well, I hope so because mm-hmm. I think he's certainly, when you, when you compare numbers to a guy everybody says he's a lock. Yeah. Uh, you know, that tells me that London Fletcher is pretty much a lock as well if you're going to base it on numbers yeah. rather than just, you know, fancy pregame dances. Yeah. True, true, and, and uh, again, he is every bit uh, Ray Lewis's match when you when you look at the numbers, no question about it. But uh, again, to a man who a lot of people epitomizes uh, the whole thing uh, of being a dominant NFL defensive player, pass rush, or, uh, pass rush off the edge, just really getting it done in a monstrous kind of a way. Lawrence Taylor, we left the Dundee and induct him in to the uh, Pantheon for the FBH Lounge as the best defensive player, and uh, again, that... Uh, that takes up uh, mini episode number 234 as we break that one down. As we bring the show to a close, we would like to extend our deepest gratitude to NBC, CBS, ABC, Fox, All Clear Channel affiliates, TNT, TBS, USA, UPN, Deadspin.com, YouTube.com, YTMND.com, MySpace.com, various blogs, Fox News, CNN, CNBC, MSNBC, IamBoard.com, Billboard.com, Google.com, ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN News, ESPN Classic, NBA TV, NFL Network, Sports Time Ohio, Athlon Magazine, Comedy Central, Cartoon Network, The Boomerang Channel, QVC, BET, The Spice Channel, Steno Notebooks, Manwich, Paper Mate Office Supplies, Waitresses, Strippers, Bartenders, Garbage Men, Janitors, Microwave Popcorn, The Writers of The Office, the Scrubs, Entourage, My Name is Earl, Oz, Metalocalypse, and The Boondocks, Aquafina, and The Periodic Table of Elements. 